So if you are a TuneCore artist or you have your music distributed through them and you want to know is it possible to get TV film or even video game placements through them, this video I'm going to break down the terms that they lay out for you and my recommendations as far as how to actually even improve your chances of getting TV film placements rather than actually going through TuneCore's publishing options. So we'll get into all those details in this video, including at the very end, I'll give you sort of a guideline for how I think you should better self-represent your music and push yourself out there to create direct relationships with the people that can actually get your songs placed, rather than going through a platform like TuneCore, as great as it is, I actually used to have music distributed through them. It's a great, great platform, but you're just one out of hundreds of thousands of artists out there that are also trying to pitch their music. So you're really just stacking the odds against yourself to get consistent placements. If that's something you seriously want to start stacking up in terms of the um, additional source of revenue for your artist career, okay? So right here, what we have on screen is their terms and conditions for their music distribution, okay? So this is just when you sign up through them and you get your tracks distributed through iTunes and Spotify and Amazon and Google Play and all the various platforms that they actually get your music out into, this is the um, contract, this is the agreement essentially that they have you sign. And it obviously is very lengthy and a lot of um, uh, moving details and, and, and fine points to it. But the biggest thing I want to point out to you in this video is when you just get your music distributed through them, okay, and that's all we're talking about. We're not talking about their publishing option, but just through their distribution uh, option. You see right here highlighted in orange the non-exclusive right. And so what they're basically saying is that you are only allowing them to, or all they're really doing for you is distributing your music to these various platforms in a non-exclusive manner, meaning that you can do other things with your music. You don't have to 100% tie it to TuneCore, okay? So that's the biggest thing that you should be keeping in mind there, that they're basically getting the non-exclusive right to sell, copy, distribute, and otherwise exploit the recordings by all means in media. So they can try to get your tracks placed, they can try to do other things with your tracks, but non-exclusively. You can take these tracks and go other, where, other places with it, okay? To collect all income derived therefrom, and to use the names, photographs, likenesses, your image, your artist name, all that kind of stuff, to try to promote you in any possible way that they possibly can, okay? So they're just basically saying, if you sign up with us and pay us these monthly dues, we will have a non-exclusive right to try to earn you as much income as we possibly can through our distribution channels. That's pretty much it. And you can obviously go through the rest of this uh, contract to see all the different kinds of um, arrangements they had. But here's the real important part I wanted to get to. So if you click on their music publishing link at the very top, um, this is their music publishing administration option that they're offering for artists, okay? And so at first glance, if you didn't know much about sync licensing, you might see this as a fairly attractive offer. And I think their terms are actually very fair. Um, you know, they have a setup fee of 75 bucks, which, you know, I'm not really too excited about. But, you know, it's not a lot of money. But um, I want to show you why in this video, why I don't think that going through TuneCore's publishing is going to land you in consistent growing income in the sync licensing business. I think you might be able to get lucky, maybe, uh, and land a couple of placements here and there. But I'm going to explain to you why I don't think that's really a smart path, especially if you know and you're aware that sync licensing is such a massive multi-billion dollar industry and it can really be a significant source of income for you as a producer, an artist, a band, whatever you might be, or a singer-songwriter, right? So basically what they're going to do is they're going to register unlimited songs for you. You can do that yourself. I can show you guys how to do that. Uh, monetize your compositions on YouTube. Yeah, but there's not much money in uh, getting your tracks uh, distributed through YouTube channels. Uh, if you're not aware, it's, it's, it's kind of a very small penny business right now. Sync licensing opportunities. This is usually where a lot of people get excited about this. And of course, right here keeping 100% of your copyright. So they're not taking, uh, it's not like a work for hire where they own your music. You still get to own your music, right? So not bad. Um, and they have this reel here where they play some of the placements that they've gotten. And uh, you know, it's very exciting looking and all that good stuff. And they talk about some of the stuff they're going to be collecting for you if you sign with them, okay? So they're saying that this is all the different sources of income that you could be earning and this is what they're gonna help you collect. So when they get a placement on a TV show, movie or commercial, something that can actually get you back in royalties, you're gonna have your PRO, that's gonna be ASCAP or BMI, uh, distributing those writer share to you and usually it's going to be um, a big chunk you'll see in their terms a big chunk of your publisher share well as well so that's one of the pros with going with TuneCore is you're actually going to earn quite a bit of your uh, back-end royalties which is really nice and then they have some mechanicals that's usually when you're doing sales and streaming um, so that's obviously already kind of built in when you're going through the distribution channels you're going to be earning that kind of stuff um, and then also with direct licensing um, 
Sorry, I, I should correct that. If you only go through their distribution channels, they're saying that you're not going to be earning that. Only if you sign through their publishing, you're going to be earning some of these mechanicals. And if you guys have heard any of these stories, streaming is paying like next to nothing. I mean, artists are getting completely robbed in that area. Um, and in record sales mechanicals, if you're selling a lot, uh, you got a lot of downloads, people actually purchasing your singles and albums, you could probably be getting some decent income on there. But if you're not really getting those numbers yet, it's probably not going to be a major source of income for you. And then direct licensing. These are usually the upfront fees that somebody would say, hey, I like this song you have. I'm going to put it in my commercial. Usually they call it a sync fee, right? That'd be a one-time fee that they would pay to put your track into that commercial movie, uh, documentary, reality show, whatever it is. So you would get that upfront fee and you would be getting the back-end royalties from the uh, PROs, performance rights uh, organizations, okay? So here's their terms. Again, like I mentioned, they have the one-time setup fee of 75 bucks. Not super excited about that, but again, you know, it does take them probably time and energy to get your tracks, register them, and put them through the system. So I get it. It's an administrative fee. So, um, you know, take that for what it's worth. But here's the rates. So they're only taking 15% of uh, royalties collected. So usually what this is going to mean is they're going to be taking uh, just a portion of your publishing uh, backend royalties. Okay. So if you're not aware, when you get sync placements, TV, film, commercials, that kind of thing, anything that can generate, it's being performed publicly. So it can generate royalties back in. Um, you basically have your royalty split into two halves, okay? So 50% of it is gonna to go to the publisher, that's the person that helped you secure the placement, did the paperwork, registration, right? Somebody who's actually publishing the music into the public domain. And then the other half goes to you, the producer, the songwriter, the artist, whoever created the piece of content. So in this structure, what they're gonna be doing is just taking that 15% out of the half, uh, this half of the um, uh, the royalties you're gonna be earning. So you're gonna be earning 85% total of the backend royalties, which is really generous, it's really nice, and that's really attractive actually. So I understand how a lot of artists see that and go, wow, it's really fair, I should just go for this. Hold on, there's something else you should be aware of though. And then of course, 20% of the sync commission. So for those upfront sync fees, if somebody had, let's say a nationwide um, a Ford commercial or something like that, and they're paying 10 grand for it, they'd keep two grand, they'd pop you over eight grand for that kind of a thing, right? So again, favor is in your, you, you have the vast majority of the, of the money coming in for those upfront sync fees. So a very attractive and very fair offer. So here's where I say, it's still, even with these decent terms um, and with the potential of you getting placements through them, here's why I don't think it's the proper way to go about it. How many artists and bands and, and producers and songwriters do you think are signed up through TuneCore and through their publishing outlets? Tens of thousands, probably hundreds of thousands. You know, I don't know if anybody's ever released the actual numbers of how many artists are actually going through their publishing side, but I can guarantee you it's not just a handful. It's definitely not less than 100. So even if you were to sign up with them and pay that $75 fee and say, oh, okay, great, now I'm going to monetize and make more money off of these sync opportunities, not, not entirely because you are basically just in a sea of tens of thousands of producers. Okay, so that's the first big hurdle. So it's basically like you could go buy a lottery ticket and think, well, I'm going to retire now because I have a chance of winning, you know, a million dollars. You can see how silly that is. The chances are so stacked against you. It's not something you should really be counting on, okay? And you shouldn't be going and spending $75 on a, a lotto ticket, right? Something like that. So that's where I think some of this doesn't quite make sense if you want to be serious about building up your sync licensing. If you just want to dabble in this kind of stuff and think, eh, we'll see what happens, 75 bucks, not going to miss that. This is perfect for you, okay? This would be a great opportunity for somebody that just wants to kind of dabble a little bit in the sync licensing uh, industry. But the other part is that how many people are you going to have like one person at TuneCore that knows you, knows your music intimately, and is also on your, working on your behalf and is actually going to be an agent for you and actually go out there and try to get you placements? Do they have an incentive for you individually of the tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of other artists and bands that are on their platform? Do they really care about you, number 9,483 that signed up for publishing with TuneCore? Not likely, okay? They just, there's only so many people working at TuneCore, there's only so many opportunities, and so they just don't have the resources to be able to give you that individualized attention. Now, one thing I wanna point out too, we're gonna go back actually to our agreements here, is I'm gonna show you also, when you sign up for their publishing administrative um, administration, when I look up exclusive, you do have to, when you sign up with them, give them the exclusive rights. To distribute your music to try to get you placements to basically do everything on your behalf when it comes to trying to get these tv film commercial youtube all those kind of things all of those placement opportunities so if you do go with them and pay the 75 bucks TuneCore is at least for those tracks right just for those tracks it's not you as an artist not signing everything you've ever completed but let's say you have an album together and you sign up with them 
that album is now 100% tied to TuneCore. You can't pitch that music to other licensing opportunities. So you're basically, your hands are tied, you're kind of stuck with them, and you're also in a position where you're one out of 100,000 producers trying to get these opportunities. So it's for this reason why I mostly recommend for um, those of you that are with TuneCore and want to get serious about sync licensing with your music to not go this way. Instead, here's, what, here's the important thing. Instead, what you should do is reach directly out to TV film music libraries. If you don't know what they are, they are essentially the clients of TuneCore. Okay, so what TuneCore does, they gather all this music, right? And they get a lot of you signed up under their publishing option so they can exclusively represent it. Then they go to music libraries, music libraries, uh, sorry, uh, music supervisors, music libraries, uh, ad agencies, reality TV show producers, trailer houses, anybody that might be needing music, they go and wine and dine them and try to pitch music to them. Again, you're just one out of 100,000, very low chances you're gonna be getting those opportunities, but that's who they're serving. So here's what you need to realize. You don't need this middleman doing that for you. Really don't. What you can do is actually bypass them and go directly to those same clients, okay? This is what a lot of producers and musicians just don't know. They think they have to go through somebody like TuneCore, like the gatekeeper, to get to these opportunities. Ain't that's wrong, okay? I, I thought that too when I first got started, in this, got started in this business over 11 years ago. So what you need to do is directly pitch your music to a TV film music library, okay? And what you're gonna tell them is that your tracks are distributed through TuneCore or you just let them know that it's on iTunes or Google Play or Spotify or wherever you have your music distributed through, let them know that your music is out there publicly. Some of them might have an issue with that. They might need to figure out a way to make that work with your career, but others are 100% okay with it. They don't mind as long as you are exclusively giving them the rights to pitch your music. Now here's why, yes, it's another exclusive opportunity. People think, oh, I get, I get freaked out by exclusive opportunities. Here's why you shouldn't be so worried about an exclusive opportunity when you're going directly to a TV film library. Because A, they're probably working with a handful of composers, and I'm talking 10 to 20, pretty much at the most. Maybe up to 50, a larger company, but these are very small, sort of tight-knit um, uh, libraries and companies that only want to work with really hardworking producers and musicians with really high quality music, okay? So they're not just accepting any music from anybody like TuneCore does, as long as you pay that fee, They'll take your music and throw it to all these platforms for you. What? Why do they really care? They have really no incentive. All they really need is a lot of subscriptions, right? So basically there's a quality difference when you partner directly with a library and you have somebody that has a personal relationship with you with a TV film library, right? They know your name. They know your email address. Hopefully you can get on the phone with them and talk to them and many of them will want to talk to you and get a feel for who you are and what you really wanna do, okay? And so you have to have personal relationships in the TV film business if you wanna get this to be a significant chunk of income. For me, it's my full-time income, okay? And for, maybe for you, it could be a part-time income and you can actually maybe see, this is what I did. I actually was a band and, uh, and was trying to do the whole record label thing for many years, but I noticed as I got into sync licensing that I got more contracts, I got more checks, I got more exposure. I mean, millions upon millions of people have heard my music through the TV shows I've gotten my uh, tracks placed in. And so that just became my natural path forward. I didn't want to dabble anymore in struggling with social media and trying to build up a fan base and trying to get streaming royalties and trying to get all that stuff. And you know exactly what I'm talking about is it's just a nightmare sometimes. So with sync licensing, I was directly serving the needs of these libraries, getting my tracks accepted and getting paid. I was getting upfront sync fees and back end royalties. And then you essentially just rinse and repeat. And what you might find, believe it or not, you might look back on this video and realize this was a big turning point for you that going in that direction is going to be something that will actually prove more fruitful and more valuable for you. And you're actually gonna find a better path to making this your full-time income than the previous path you were on. So if you wanna get started and learn how to do this seriously, here's what you need to do. There is a link in the description box below of this video to a free five-day course. This is a course that essentially summarizes over 10 years of my personal experience in this business. And I'm gonna let you know about all the really dumb mistakes I made in the very beginning that almost completely screwed me over and took me out of this industry forever, okay? So I wanna make sure you don't make those mistakes. There's five of them, essentially, that can be career killers in the long run. But this course is 100% free, and I recommend you at least just sign up for it and go through it, because what I'll guarantee you is by the end of the five uh, videos, you will know 100% what it really takes to do very well in this business and whether or not it's gonna be a good fit for you. Many of you watching this video might get by the end uh, of, the, of the five days and realize, you know what, not really what I wanna do, I wanna kinda keep going on the path that I'm on, great. 
but you should find that out right now. You don't wanna go five years into the future, not see the results that you want and look back and realize, man, I wish I would have diversified my income streams a little bit more and kind of thought a little bit more about sync licensing because this is the only, one of the only sides of the music business that's actually growing right now. Believe it or not, year after year, more and more income is generated. And you've heard of all the money that gets poured into ad campaigns and Super Bowl ads. And you know, you've heard of all the money that gets thrown into the TV film industry. So now is a really great time to discover if it's something you really want to jump in on. So I've been helping educated um, producers for over three years now on how to really succeed in this side of the business. And I know that by enrolling in that free course, you're going to learn exactly what it's going to take to succeed and whether or not this is going to be something you should be committing a lot of your time moving forward. So thank you so much for watching. And if you found this useful, please leave a like, please subscribe and leave a comment below if you have any further questions about TuneCore publishing administration or even just TV film sync licensing in general, I'll be more than happy to help.